Hello again, everybody. I'm Luca here from Odison. I'm Ken Ward. Yeah, and we are here today for our episode three. Today's our topic is fast and effective, the Odison sound pack concept. This is our third episode. We'd like to thank everyone who attended our two previous episodes. Our audience has included people from every continent except Antarctica. Yeah, but we are getting organized for that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Where'd you get this picture? Well, that's in the Audison website, together with a lot of other interesting materials. I am really impressed at all the information Audison provides the specialist dealer. And I'm glad that you like them. We can divide the materials in three kinds, marketing, technical, and educational. Now you should really be using these resources as specialist dealers in promoting products to your customers. Yeah, and there's also a great e-learning section where you can find products information, technical insight, and tutorials. Also, the product section is very exhaustive, including test sheets, manuals, and for the smart products, you can find the latest firmware and software to download and update your Audison devices. For the bit products, you can also download all the calibration tracks right. from the website, and you can also read the owner's manuals. I, I should probably explain what owner's manuals are. They're these books that have all the information in them about each of the products. Come on, Ken, I think they know what manuals are. We just wish more people to read them. Well, it does help a lot if you want to know the products. And Audison manuals are very well organized, and that definitely helps. Knowing the products save you a lot of time during the installation. So just manuals? No, there's also detailed data sheets for every single product on the website. And I think you should read the data sheet, especially if you're getting ready to sell the product. And this is the kind of detailed information that very few companies provide nowadays. And let's not forget the sound pack configurator. Uh, yeah. And today we want to talk about sound packs. Audison concept for the sound pack is to design an affordable sound system using modern OEM technology. Use Prima Beat amplifier, speakers, and subwoofer. Design audio system for popular vehicles. The sound pack includes vehicle specific parts to reduce or eliminate custom fabrication, saving time and money. Integration harnesses to speed up the installation. Speaker mounting adapters for several vehicles. And most of our sound packs include pre-tuned setup configuration files. So the first vehicle we supported was the Volkswagen Golf and the Golf Mark 7 is still supported with the sound pack today. We have a quick video on this project. Ken, can you tell us about it? Yeah, hmm. here's the Golf traveling in space. This is one of my yeah. favorite parts. <laughs> now, here's all the components that you get with the Golf sound pack. And we're gonna go through them one by one. So this is the midwoofer that goes in the front door. And you can see there's two six and a halves, but they're not just speakers. You also get Volkswagen specific mounting adapters and you'll see there's gaskets attached to the speaker. It's a two ohm driver to get more power out of the amp. Now this isn't the amplifier. This is actually the integration harness. You'll notice it's covered in spiral Tessa tape. There's a big argument in North America about how you're supposed to tape your harnesses right now. This is the right way. And you can see this plugs into everything in the car. There's no wires cut anywhere in the vehicle. And this plugs into the back of the head unit. So here's the amplifier. And it's an 8.9 bit that's specially for the Volkswagen. So you'll notice that it doesn't have exactly the same things in it that a regular 8.9 has. Um, right here, you'll see that there's an ASP module. We'll talk about that in a bit. And you can see the sticker on the amplifier specifies it's for the Golf. Now here is the subwoofer. And the subwoofer is a single 10 inch sub firing down and it's engineered to fit underneath the floor of the Golf. You can see the handle that allows you to remove it if you need to get underneath it. And we'll show you how it fits in the car in a minute. And you even get speaker wiring adapters. So when you put the six and a halves in the door, you don't have to cut any wires in the door either. So here we're plugging the harness into the OEM tweeter. Here we're putting the subwoofer underneath the floor of the back end. And you'll see the floor going over the top. 
everything closes back up like stock. Now we're taking out the factory speaker, we're plugging in the adapter because the adapter has to be fit underneath the spacer and then the spacer bolts into the door. Now, when we put in the speaker after this, you're gonna notice, well, first of all, don't forget to hook up the speaker. I'm sure all <laughs> of us have made that mistake. But when you bolt the speaker in, can you see the gasket that comes on the front? That's exactly perfect for the Volkswagen door panel to seal up against the front of the speaker. So we put the door panel back on, remember to hook up the door lock. We've all made that mistake too. The last thing that's left here is the amplifier and the integration harness. So we're, in this video, we're gonna Velcro the amplifier underneath the seat. I usually like to mount mine down solid. And you're gonna see that we plug into the integration harness for everything but power and ground. Power and ground is in the integration harness and we have to insert those into the terminals and tighten them down. In this system, we're actually pulling power and ground from the head unit harness. And the Prima amplifiers have an adjustable current limitation. So if you're using the head unit power, you won't pop the fuse. Cut the unused wires and tape them off. And then the amplifier goes under the seat. The ASP module keeps the Volkswagen from muting. That's what it was designed for. So now the radio is going to slide into the dash. And we find out Luca's been the installer the entire time. Rock and now, roll. Yeah. <laughs> he's obviously rocking out here. I wish we could hear exactly what he's listening to. But good job, Luca. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ken. A very nice introduction. And by the way, just to explain that uh, why we did that, because the Volkswagen Golf is one of the most popular vehicles in the world. So we selected as the first vehicle to be supported by a sound pack. And uh, just to show you a little bit more details on this, and our uh, sound, uh, Mark 7 sound pack upgrades for door and mid woofers improve the sound of the front tweeters and adds a Prima Beat amplifier for more power and DSP control. Our plus system includes a subwoofer in an enclosure. Uh, can you show a picture, please? Oh, sorry. Uh, no worries. Uh, that's the yeah the sound pack with the with the sub enclosure, and that's pretty cool to see oh. all together. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Yes, that's that that's that's the layout, and as you can see, the includes the the sub with the enclosure, and it's the same one I've been putting into the dash very easily. So, so coming back to us, yes, please. So Luca, in this system. Um, how come you're not upgrading the tweeters? Why did you plug the integration harness into the factory tweeters? Well, well, it turns out the tweeters are very difficult to remove. We tested and determined that by going active tweeters and using DSP equalization, we could get good results with much less time. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So where do you get the tuning file for the amplifier? Well, we actually designed the tuning file into the presets of the Prima amplifier. The rotary switch that selects setup file lets you access the proper setting for this sound pack. Oh, so it really is built in. It is, yes. But now it's time for the MW. And let me show you an interesting video we have filmed here in Italy for you guys. They look the same, but only one sounds amazing. The ideal audio system upgrade, designed for your BMW. Audison Prima Sound Pack for BMW. How cool, eh? Now we offer dozens of sound pack systems for 14 different BMW models, and we also cover eight mini models. I believe you know something about BMWs, right? 
Yeah, I've been a BMW enthusiast for years. And I can tell you that BMWs have been known for complicated factory audio systems that had really disappointing performance. Um, many auto sound specialist dealers have avoided BMWs because of how complex they are. So about 20 years ago, BMW was designing a new seven series. And when they did, they made a lot of changes to the infotainment system. And eventually those big changes came out to every BMW model. The iDrive system, right? Yeah, iDrive was part of it, but the sound systems also changed. So that seven series was the very first BMW to have eight inch flat woofers mounted in the floor. And it also had the eight, the four inch mid ranges up high in the doors like this. And BMW ended up using that same eight inch, four inch and tweeter system layout in almost every car going forward from there. And I bought one of those cars in 2007. I bought an E91 three series touring sedan, uh, what we in the US call a station wagon. And how did you like that? Oh, I love the car, but I hated the sound. <laughs> and I started doing some research, but it turned out Nobody in the U.S. knew anything about upgrading these BMWs yet. So I did some measurements and I tested a lot of different speakers and I made a lot of different adapters. And some people told me that the speaker sizes and the locations were the problem, that I couldn't get good sound with an eight under the floor and a four in the door. Um, but my experiments told me that really wasn't correct. You can get great results with the BMW sizes and locations. So. For the BMW Soundpack program, Audison developed a whole new speaker line uh, to fit in the four inch and eight inch BMW locations. And they all have BMW connectors built in. Here, let me show you a picture. So this is a front magnet, shallow 200 millimeter woofer, and it's available in two ohm and four ohm versions. And when you look at these in person, it's really obvious that they took a lot of engineering to develop. Now, let's see. Here is the two different sets of four inch components that Audison developed. Now the tweeters are the same, but you can see that the frames for the two four inch mid ranges are, are different. Mm -hmm. um, the crossovers on these are very small and they fit inside the door. So there's no rewiring needed. And the same thing was done for Audison's hundred millimeter coaxials. You can see the tweeters are the same, but the frames are different. And the coaxials are valuable for two reasons. One of them is you can add tweeters to base audio BMWs without changing the tweeter mount trims or installing the tweeter mount trims or cutting any holes. But it also makes rear speakers much easier to add. So the different four inch speakers are for the two different 100 millimeter frames that BMW uses. Um, for example, the front door speakers in an E90 sedan use the larger frame speaker, but the center channel and the rear deck speakers use the smaller frame speaker, even though they're all in the same car. And I think it's important to note that these speakers were engineered from the ground up and we use all new tooling. Electromedia made a significant investment in developing these drivers, can't you tell? Well, yeah, and we're really talking about two different things here. The first thing is that Audison has a line of BMW specific speakers. And the second thing is that Audison has developed sound packs which use these BMW speakers. That's a good point. And I have to tell you, if these speakers had been around back when I bought my E91, I would have yeah. never done all of that testing and all of that measurement. I would have just sure. used these Audison components right out of the gate. Um, and there's something I do want to explain. Um, if you have a BMW with that eight inch, four inch tweeter arrangement from the Hi-Fi, uh, their Hi-Fi audio system, if you add improved power and DSP, right off the bat, that system will sound better than any OEM system you've ever heard. If you upgrade the speakers also, then you'll have just incredible sound. Okay. Well, as you might know, most BMWs outside the US do not have hi-fi. They only have bass stereo. Yeah, here in the US, we only got bass stereo for the 2010 model year. And I can tell you just from those cars, those speakers are very low performance and they really have to be upgraded. Mm -hmm. And our plan was to use this BMW Prima speaker with our existing Prima Beat processor amplified. Well, I love the thinking that has gone into all of these BMW systems. Uh, most of the supported DSP systems have validated tune files for the specialist dealer to use. Although I have to admit, I do turn up the bass a little bit. <laughs> and let's see. Yes, I know you're tricky. And why? 
what what car is it? So this example here is a dealer install in a 2019 BMW X5 with 676 Hi-Fi sound. And you can see here, the BMW tweeter has just snapped right into place in place of the factory tweeter trim, in the tweeter trim, I should say. Whoa. And same in the door. This is a 100 millimeter Audison uh, mid-range bolted into the X5, X6 adapter that Audison has in the sound pack for just those vehicles. Most of the BMWs, the speaker bolts in directly, but in the X5 and X6, this adapter is included. Now you'll see for the eight inch under seat, BMW made a lot of engineering choices to be able to build an eight inch woofer into the floor of the car. And not just any speaker will fit in there. It's very difficult to find one that, that will fit and then to find one that will fit and sound good. Here is the hi-fi integration harness connecting to the BMW. You can see that no wires were cut. And then there's the amplifier. Wow, but I see they're using a forcer, right? Yes, with this project, they went a little bit off book and they used the APF 8.9 bit amplifier. And I have to admit, I also have a Forza in my car as well. Well, I can understand. As the Forza amplifier with DSP is the newest Prima amplifier, and we are going to dedicate the next episode, how to use the Forza. So here I can see they are tuning the Forza. Going out of the book requires a bit extra effort, but the results are worth it. Well, I currently have the Audison three-way system installed in my 335 GT. I have the 100 millimeter Audison speakers in the front doors, and I have the 200 millimeter Audison woofers under the seats. But I'm powering it with the Forza, and like you said, that's technically not covered by the Soundpack program. Um, I really like this setup, and to install it, I didn't need any special adapters or preparation that I needed to make. Everything came with the Soundpack except the Forza wiring adapter, which is also available from Audison. I, all I had to do was do the tune. Mm -hmm. By the way, I noticed that you call um, the underseat uh, drivers woofers and not subwoofers. Yeah, subwoofer sounds exciting and sexy. Wow. And I know BMW <laughs> calls them that. But these underseat speakers are only about two inches deep. So you, you can't play sub bass at high levels with that kind of excursion limit. That's why I call them woofers. Uh, I've heard them in an F33 series that had a true subwoofer, an APS. 10D in the trunk running off an AP1D amplifier. And then we use the underseat woofers as mid bass and we band pass them from 50 Hertz to up to about 200. And it just sounds incredible. Let's see here. So yeah. BMW and Mini have three levels of audio package for most of their vehicles. Let's see, I'll show you a picture. Um, there we go. Bass stereo uses deck power with no amplifier. It doesn't have any tweeters. And then under the seat, there's 165 millimeter speakers with big adapter rings in the 200 millimeter woofer holes. And this system sounds really awful. <laughs> However, this package is very common in Europe. It is very rare in the US in BMW models, but it's very common in the US in mini models. Yes, after BMW developed the 8.4 tweeter system, they started using it in minis as well. So Audison has an integration harnesses, bleh, harness for these base audio vehicles, and it separates the underseat woofer wiring from the mid-range wiring where BMW had tied them together. And the Audison coaxes let you add a tweeter to minis and to BMWs with base audio without purchasing the missing OEM tweeter trim parts. And it's really important to upgrade the speakers in a base audio car because they're just horrible. You're not gonna get good results. They, they're very limited in performance. So then there's 676 Hi-Fi and that includes an external amp. It's either six or seven channels. It's a low power amplifier. Um, the system will usually have tweeters and there are 200 millimeter under seat woofers under the seat. They're usually two ohm. Uh, in past 10 years or so, hi-fi systems have included a mono center speaker. And when we look at the configurator, you will see that Audison lists speaker upgrades using the hi-fi amp, as well as amp and speaker upgrades. Uh, I personally have also had a lot of success taking an eight channel medium power DSP amplifier. Like the Prima 8.9 bit? 
exactly wow. and getting great <laughs> results in bmws even while i was using the bmw hi-fi speakers i confirm now audison has an integration harness for hi-fi cars as well and it's pretty short because you can unplug the oem amplifier in the trunk and connect a prima amplifier in its place and remember the components will allow the tweeter to snap into the existing oem sail trims in a hi-fi car now BMW has this thing called ASD in 2016 and up cars. It's called active sound design. And it's that fake engine note that the system plays through the speakers. And Audison has this optional harness that where if ASD is present in a BMW or a mini, you can uh, uh, bypass it very simply. So the whole system is very straightforward. If you have a hi-fi car, you'll be amazed at the upgrade just with an 8.9 bit with OEM speakers. Um, but remember, don't bridge the channels into the OEM two ohm underseat woofers. You may end up using leaving two channels unused if you go that route. Now, finally, BMW has several different premium systems. Uh, they often call them DSP, and they may have a Logic 7 badge or a Harman Kardon badge. Uh, sometimes they have no badge at all, like the 5 Series for some reason usually doesn't have any branding on it. Um, those premium systems use the same size speakers. They use more of them and the amplifiers are different and have different connectors. And the premium systems are not covered by the sound pack program. Audison hasn't developed a harness for these cars because few of them are seen internationally for audio upgrades. So I think this is important to understand. Some BMWs are covered by the sound pack program, are not covered by the sound pack program. Yes, but more are added all the time. Yep, that is true. And that doesn't mean they're not covered by the BMW speaker program, right. and they may be covered by the Audison bit DMI also. Yep. So you can still design a system that uses a bit DMI and Audison speakers. And that's what I have in my new car, my F34 335 GT. It has a bit DMI feeding signal to a Forza amplifier, which powers Audison speakers. And if you're in that situation, you can start with a 676 hi-fi tuning file and then just change the input in the software over to optical. So you can use the individual parts if you're a specialist dealer and design your own custom system for BMWs. And even if you're in one of the newest BMWs where there's an all new iDrive system and there's new amplifier connectors and new harnesses, the speakers still bolt in and fit. Question, what if the car is covered by the sound pack system but doesn't have a validated setup file? Well, that's a good question. Now, if the car is covered by the SoundPack program and there is a setup file for the system, you're gonna see the plug and sound logo here on the configurator. I if see. it doesn't show a plug and sound logo on the configurator, there is not a validated tuning file. Okay. Hmm. And we take the, the tuning file very seriously, in fact. We don't supply one if we haven't tested the setting in that model. So if you don't see that logo, you should plan on tuning it yourself when the installation is completed. Should you start from scratch? No. Here, pardon me a second. No worries. What I would do is take a tuning file for a similar mm -hmm. sound pack system. For instance, mm -hmm. let's see here. What I would do is follow this list. I would take a tuning okay. file for a similar sound pack system. I'd choose a BMW that has the same audio package as the one you're working with and start with that. And then you can change the distances and the levels if you need to, but then EQ the way you want. If you make changes there, I would make changes to both the left and the right sides at the same time. Yeah, and that makes sense. Okay. Now you will be glad to hear that we will introduce the new integration harnesses soon, compatible with those new iDrive 7 components and connectors. But now let's talk about the Ford program. We also have developed different system configuration for various Ford F-150 Super Crew trucks. The basic system uses a Prima APA 5.9 bit as the amplifier and processor. We are using the Prima APK1652 ohm in the front doors and APX6.5 coaxials in the rear doors. And the subwoofer is the APBX8R 
vented enclosure. We send 150 watts to the vented sub, 90 by two to the front components and 20 by two to the rear coaxials. With the upgraded system, we use the AP 8.9 bit as the bit main amplifier and processor. We use the APK 696 by nine component set in the front doors in an active configuration. And we use the APX 6.5 coaxials in the rear doors again. Now we use a power that subwoofer, the APBX 10 AS2. We're using the 8.9 bit in a staggered six channel mode. 35 watts to each front tweeter, 130 watts to each front door 6x9 mid woofer, 35 watts to each rear coaxials, and 400 watts continuous power, 800 watts peak to the 10 inch subwoofer. Ford has a base audio and Sony premium audio, and we support integration with both systems. The Ford Sony system uses an A Data Link Maestro AR to integrate with the OEM receiver. Speaker mounting adapters are included and the subwoofer just fits under the rear seat. These have been well received by the market, but you have to remember the customer it's intended for. It is my understanding that the four truck owner is very often very different from the Golf or BMW owner. I think that's correct. These trucks aren't quiet inside and the owner may have modified the truck to make changes that make the background noise even louder. And the way that I look at these packages is that they're not intended for the 25 year old guy with a lifted four by four, like a uh, XLT. Uh, they're really intended for that guy's boss who has a high end F-150, like a Lariat or a Platinum, or maybe even a Raptor. Okay. You may know that we don't have any four trucks in Italy, right? I don't know what any of those words means. I'm sorry about that, Luca. <laughs> no worries. I will learn. Uh, now, the new sound pack we are launching in the next few weeks is the Toyota Tacoma, and I believe you know a little bit about it. What can you tell us on? Well, recently Electromedia asked me if I'd help out with developing a sound pack for the third generation Tacoma. And I've been upgrading to audio in Toyota trucks since the days the Hilux in the US. I even owned a Hilux. And so I was really excited to work on this project. Um, the Tacoma is really successful and they've sold over 1 million third generation trucks in North America. So the non JBL base audio package doesn't have any subwoofer at all. And it doesn't have any amplifier at all. And you can see in this diagram um, that uses deck power to power the front dash speakers and the front door speakers on a shared set of channels. And then it uses another set of channels to power the rear door speakers. So like most modern cars, there's a lot of processing that's used inside the Toyota deck. It's been processed in a couple of ways. There's definitely normal equalization, which you can see here. There's a lot of bass roll off. You can see they've done a lot of equalization to that signal. But we can't see if they're using phase equalization by testing just one channel. So if we want to compare the phase of two channels, the easiest way is to sum the two channels together and then measure the sum. And you want to do that safely. You don't just touch speaker wires together because that would be bad. And when you sum them together, what we're looking for are areas of cancellation like this. If you see a chart where the left and the right get added together and they have a big hole, the two channels are not in phase in that big hole. So when we look at this chart, you'll see most of the bars got taller, but there's a big hole on this chart. And you can see it's right here at 250 hertz. And we did that with a line output converter and then we summed together the results. And because the signal is almost disappearing there, it means that the two sides are 180 degrees out of phase there. And that means they used an all pass filter. So I guess they're using simple phase equalization, right? Yes, they are. Remember these acoustic cancellations we've talked about in previous episodes? Right. These are the cancellations that happen if the same signal comes out of both door speakers and we sit off center in the car. That's caused by the different distances to the speakers. So what Toyota did was they put the signal out of phase on one channel here so that the signal would be electrically out of phase, but acoustically when it got to your head, it would be in phase. And that's a textbook example of phase equalization. 
And so because they put one side out of phase with the other, they got this. And the, the biggest cancellation goes away. The worst of the problems gets corrected. But any upgrades we do still have to deal with cancellations at 750 and 1250 and 1750. And above that, it's really debatable how important those cancellations are. Our brains are fairly good at ignoring small cancellations up in the higher end. So Toyota made a really meaningful improvement for an OEM sound system, but we're doing high-end audio and we want better than that. Now, we cannot use delay to solve this problem because delay depends on both channels being in phase on all frequencies in order for delay to work. So if we did use delay, what we would end up with is a big cancellation and we would have solved the small ones, but the worst problem would come back. And you may have heard a situation like that. So how do we solve that? Let me show you. Here's those cancellations again. Now we're gonna take our door woofer and we're gonna low pass it at 500. So now it's only playing one of the cancellations. And Toyota already used phase equalization to handle that one cancellation. So we don't have to enter different delays onto the speakers. What I recommend you do is measure the distance to the passenger door woofer and enter that value for both door woofers. And this is what you get. And below 500, we're okay. Now, what about the problems above 500? Now, these are not exactly right because now they're not coming out of door speakers. They're coming out of dash speakers and distances have changed a little bit, but the principle is the same. So the OEM is okay with this because they just wanted an acceptable two seat result, but we don't want acceptable. We want great stereo sound for the driver. So first off, we high pass those speakers at 500. We know these two channels were in phase with each other at all frequencies. So now we can use delay on these channels. And this is what we talked about in the last episode. We use the factory phase equalization on the woofer channel. We use our delay on the wideband speaker. And that's what we did in the sound pack. We use the AP690 to play below 500 and we use the AP2 to play above 500. And that's something we mentioned last week, you cannot do with a six and a tweeter, but you can do it with these speakers. Yes, and as far as I can remember, we had some question on this approach from the last episode. Can you please explain it again? Sure, let me go through that again, because that was, that was a lot of information. <laughs> Step one, measure the distance from the driver's head to the passenger door woofer. We did that when we set up the sound pack file. Then we entered that distance into the bit processor for both the passenger and the driver door woofers. Now that means that the signal is not being delayed differently for left and right. We entered the normal distances for all the other speakers. We measured the distance of the sub, we measured the distance of the dash speakers. We entered all those distances normally. That let the OEM phase equalization work for us on the door speaker, but we got better integration of the door woofer to the sub and from the door woofer to the dash because we used some delay. So this isn't technically perfect. We might've lost a dB or two in the transition band, but we didn't lose 30 dB like we did when we saw that 180 degree phase cancellation. And when we set this up, we use 2040B link once Riley slopes and that minimizes the transition band. And so it minimizes any sort of problems you might have in the transition band. Thank you, Ken. And I think going over that, again, helps some of our viewers with this concept. Now let's go back to the Tacoma Sound Park. It's a 410 watts RMS active system. It has a subwoofer, door woofers, and dash wideband speakers. There is an integration harness included. Can you please give us a bit more details about it? Sure. Now, with the base audio package, there's a couple of pockets behind the rear seat. And mm -hmm. we use the subwoofer enclosure that fits inside the pocket, so you don't have to take those pockets out. We saw some aftermarket solutions that required you to take out all that plastic and just go down to the bare metal, and we didn't really like that. The subwoofer is an APBX8DS. That's the eight inch Prima subwoofer in a high quality sealed enclosure and it's two ohms. So we get full power from the amplifier to it. The amplifier in this case is a 5.9 bit. Um, the 5.9 bit is doing 270 watts RMS to the subwoofer. 
It's doing 50 watts RMS to each six by nine, and it's doing 20 watts RMS to each AP2 speaker in the dash. And that makes over 400 watts RMS in total. Yes. Now here's the list of vehicle specific parts that come in the sound pack. And we're gonna show you how these work. Um, the integration harness is plugging in at the speaker. This whole harness makes wiring very straightforward. Uh, there's door mounting adapters and gaskets included. I think you'll find these are the best door mounting adapters you've ever used in a Toyota. And of course <laughs> the wiring adapters are also included. So they just plug into the wiring in the door. There's a gasket ring included that connects to the back of the door panel to seal up the door panel to the new speaker. And then here's the, uh, the steel adapters for the AP2 to bolt into the dash using the OEM hardware. You can see that right here. Uh, by the way, didn't the wiring change for the Tacoma 2020? So the radio changed in 2020 and the radio right. connectors changed in 2020, but our integration harness here doesn't connect to the radio. It connects to the dash speakers and the speaker connectors didn't change. So it's still good. Okay, now, how does it sound? Oh, it sounds great. It's a <laughs> lot cleaner, it's a lot louder, and it has a lot more bass. But best of all, it has great stereo from the driver's seat. And that's something most people have never heard in a car. Our beta tester loves to modify his Tacoma. And he researched every single option he could find for how to upgrade the audio system before we put in the sound pack. And epic is the word he uses to describe it. Wow. Epic. <laughs> okay, then what if a customer has the 2016 Tacoma, which we believe didn't come with the all pass filtering radio? Well, we put that into preset B. So you can select preset B and then it's a standard delay tune for the driver. Okay, okay. And uh, what if the customer has replaced the OEM radio with an aftermarket one? That's no problem either. Select preset B and then turn off DEQ in the menu for the software for the Prima and you're set. And uh, what if some customer don't like our tuning and want a different one? I think this is an important top topic for sound packs right. overall. Yeah. When a system is tuned, we're doing a few different things. We're setting the crossover filter points and types and slopes, and we're setting the input sensitivity, but also the output level. And we adjust the levels left and right and then we correct the cancellations using delay. And finally, we will work on the overall sound of the system with the EQ and the level, a little bit with level and then a lot of EQ. So the hardest part of hitting a target curve is getting all the phase right and avoiding the phase cancellations. And once that work is done, fine tuning to hit different curves is actually fairly easy. So we can change the overall sound once we get the phase cancellation solved but you really can't change the overall sound without getting the phase cancellation solved. And you have to either solve, uh, solve the cancellations or avoid them before we can start working on the tonality. Yeah, yeah, right. And I would like to remember everyone that Audison is an international company. We distribute all over the world. Our customers have different listening attitudes. We depend on our customers to fine tune for their market, of course. So here are some examples of different reference response curves that different people use. Now, if you have a different sound target than the sound pack used that you would like to use, please feel free to do that. But my advice is that you shouldn't start from scratch. Use mm. the work that has already been done. Change the level and change the EQ to hit your new target. And if the center, if sorry, if the image is in the center, then make sure your changes affect the left and the right equally and both on the level and the EQ to keep the center in the center. And what if you want to move the center? If you want to move the center, I think you should use level. Increase the levels toward the side that you want the center to move towards. And you also mentioned that you add bass to the BMW tuning files. Yeah, I make a couple of changes to that, <laughs> just, just a little. <laughs> okay, some specialist ask, how do you know if a particular vehicle is supported with an Audison sound pack? Well, that's a really good question. Let me show you how to use the configurator because some people haven't done that yet. It shouldn't so, be difficult, right? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> so this is the Audison sound page, or sorry, homepage. So you go up to the upper right and you click on menu 
And after the, oh, did it, there we go. So now you go to the upper right and you click on Prima. Now it is gonna show you every Prima product, but in the upper right, right here, there's a button for Sound Pack Configurator. And we're gonna to go to the page for the Sound Pack and we're gonna go straight to the Configurator. So that was four clicks. I don't think that's too bad. And you can see BMW, Ford, Mini, and Volkswagen. And when Toyota ships, Toyota will be added here. I'm gonna to go to BMW. And it's gonna ask you which series of vehicle it is. Now, fortunately, BMW puts a badge on the trunk lid to tell you which series it is. So I'm gonna go with three series, which is the most popular BMW model. And not everyone is an ex expert on the different BMW models. So you can see Audison put pictures of all the different three series they support right here. This is the one I own. I own a GT F34. So I'm gonna select that. And what it's going to load is all of the sound pack options for the three different audio systems that are available. I'm going to look at Hi-Fi right here. So we have four systems available. Over on the right, we could put in just new front speakers and we would get better sound. We could put in new front speakers and two ohm woofers under the seat and we could get better sound. We could upgrade all the speakers in the car, including the center, and we would get better sound off of the factory amplifier. Now, when we get to this last system, this is the only one with a bit amplifier. So this is the only one with the plug and sound logo because the tuning file is included. So I'm gonna click on this so we can see more information about this system. So the first thing it shows you is a system map in the car and it shows you where the different parts go and it shows you the name of the amplifier integration harness that you will need. You can see here, the plug and sound uh, tune file is right at the top. Then there's a list of all the different parts you will need to install this. If you want to download that list so that you can print it out and use it to order the proper parts, you can click on download PDF and that'll download exactly what you see here in a PDF to your PC. Yeah, so as I said, it's not that difficult, huh? I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, you know. I, so I have a question, Luca. Yeah, what is it? What should a specialist do if they have a customer vehicle that is not covered by the sound pack? Simple and easy. They should build their own. Uh, let's see, like this? Hold on. Yes, because, uh, by the way, we have been... Um, we have been manufacturing a lot of accessories for, for that. And uh, we have developed many TRNSs to allow you to connect the head unit easily, okay? Then we have extensions for those harnesses available and speakers, how to put extension and also signal input extensions. So a specialist can take a Prima amplifier and extend the harnesses and build something for many cars in many cases. Yes, exactly, along with the Prima speaker sends a buffer, and that's mandatory, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All these parts are listed on the Audison website under Prima. This is the same page as all the other Prima products and the sound pack configurator as well. Now, you have a full knowledge about sound pack, but I'm sure some of you must have questions. Oh, question to answer, I love this part. Okay, so, Please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen to ask questions. And then we're gonna be answering you live. And I think we got some already here. Yeah, I, um, I'd like to take a crack at this one. What separates these speakers from everyone else selling a similar speaker? Well, I think that that's a question that you have to ask about anybody that's in the speaker business, right? Why is this speaker better? Um, I get the feeling this question is probably about BMW. And I've noticed that some companies are selling BMW speakers that they've ordered from an uh, offshore manufacturer that they don't really know anything about. Uh, Audison developed these speakers directly themselves. And I've listened to almost every BMW speaker that's available. Uh, I've even made packages for retail customers. And I think these speakers sound great. And I think they're really easy to install and I would have no problem putting these speakers in any level system I wanted to do. 
So okay. um, I don't know exactly how to answer that question other than to say that obviously Audison has a lot of speaker experience. Well, did you have okay. anything to add, Lupa? Well, uh, no, I'm okay with that. I just, uh, um, yes, uh, usually there's, a, the, there's a, a chat on a side and the, and the question and answer on the other. Uh, most users are using the chat, so let's scroll it and see. There's a question I might be asking, will you make this custom packs also for Nishan Kaskai J11, which is very popular crossover in Europe? Well, um, as far as I know, it's not in the pipeline, but that's a good idea. Let me pass this to our R&D people and see what we can do. It's sure we have many, many speakers and solution adapting to this car. And then uh, will Audison make plug and play speakers and subwoofer for Mercedes Benz? As said, we have uh, lots of harnesses to use that and our speaker really fits well in some, especially in the kick panel, you can use the AP8 with an adapter. Uh, how do you know which package that car came with? Ken, this is possibly something we've been discussing in the previous episode and you have a replay for that, right? Well, there's a couple of ways that you can tell which package the car comes with. And one okay. of them is to use the configurator that walks you through it. Um, sometimes you, there is a online uh, VIN lookup tool where you can look up a particular BMW VIN number and see which audio package it came with. Um, but the easy way is to look at the configurator and click on, I don't know, and then it will coach you through which system you have. Yeah. Uh, there's Richard Laprec and says, uh, can preload the beat amp for your specialist? I don't understand very well what- I this think is. I understand, like the Golf comes loaded for the car. Um, that's, that approach ended up being very cumbersome. And so that's why the change was made to use the, uh, the bit amplifier that you may already have in stock and put the tuning file in it for the sound pack. So, I don't think that's the best way to do it because the presumption is that you can use a amplifier that you may already have on the shelf for a sound pack and just load the tuning file. So I, I don't think that's the, the, the best way to do it. You probably should go ahead and load the amp, uh, tuning file yourself. Okay, now finally, question and answer section. We have Antonio Girardelli. The last name sounds very Italian, but he writes perfectly in English. So I don't know if it's an Italian American or wherever. And he's asking, will we have something coming for the new Ford F trucks with BNO? That's a great question. My understanding is that there is some testing to determine how to approach the, the trucks with BNO. And that one thing to be clear about with BNO is that the F-150 with BNO is a new network. So the Maestro AR you saw in the system doesn't work in that vehicle. Uh, the BNO systems in the F-250 for some reason were just the same as the Sony systems and the Maestro AR worked in those vehicles up until 2020. But yes, there are tests being done to cover BNO as well. And then there is uh, Ariane De Jong. Is Audison going to develop an AP8 sub adapter for Mercedes? Not uh, as far as I know, but I am sure you can find a lot on the, um, on the specialist of this kind of accessories. And uh, Jimmy Bradfield is asking, since this system are completely plug and play and the tuning files are available for download, the, the Ill, only real tuning that needs to be done by the installer is to measure the speakers for delay time alignment? Actually, Jimmy, that's already done too. The only tuning that would need to be done by the installer is if they listened to it and decided they wanted more bass than the international tune. Uh, but as far as uh, entering in the, the distances, that's only something you would need to do if you're do covering a car that wasn't, that didn't have a pre-tuned uh, file and you're making your own, then you would want to double check the distances. But if you're using a, a sound pack that has the supported file, you don't have to do enter distances at all. Okay, next, uh, Luca Atlagic um, in Italian. Uh, which configuration of sub is better for BMW E91? Um, customer have now all Audison kit and wants more base. <laughs> well, I, I, having owned an E91, I can tell you that you can definitely have more base, but it really depends on what your starting point. And uh, Luca might 
direct you to a specialist that could help you in that area uh, to figure out how to get more bass from the car. Where are, where are you, Luca, from? And anyway, we will provide you, we will provide you um, an email address later on. You can, you can contact us and we'll do your best to support your, uh, your request. Uh, what else? Uh, Slovenia, Slovenia, okay, okay. Uh, later on, uh, Luca will be, will be giving you the address uh, if no other question. Come on, guys, we're leaving soon. Dinner time in Italy and maybe <laughs> lunch time in the US, right? <laughs> okay, then. Uh, anyone else? Do you guys have uh, a search to make sure to use yes. the good harness for this particular car? Um, there is not a VIN search. And one of the reasons I think is that BMW really doesn't officially make that VIN information uh, available. The guys that are doing it, it always seems to disappear after six or 12 months. And then you have to find another guy who's doing it. So it is not reliable. And so the sound pack system has to be reliable. So before the VIN lookups tools were available, I, I, I developed several ways to determine by looking at the car uh, that you have the right system. And so I think the configurator is giving you a way to do that without having to have the VIN number. Yeah. Yes. And there's a Rob Oshasky from Chicago, right? And he's asking if will the current tuning files work on Forza? And that would be no. <laughs> that was pretty straightforward, right? And Rob, with the current, okay, okay. Uh, let's go down here. There's Rob uh, with the current file work on force as well. That was a no as well. Um, then uh, there is uh, uh, Andrea Benedetti. And again, uh, please use the Q&R section and not the chat to ask, not because we are picky on this, but because we can keep your contact and your questions saved after we close the webinar. That's the only reason because you are insisting on this. And uh, I have changed my base theory on BMW G 2 x 4 with Twitter and media. Have you read it already? Uh, I read okay. it already. Andrea, nice car, first of all. Um, I would go into the tuning file and turn off DEQ because once you are using the hi-fi setting from the head unit, you no longer need DEQ. And that is the first thing that I would do to, to tune the car. Um, after that, what I would probably do is I would go to the configurator website and install any four series hi-fi tune, which will already have DEQ turned off and then listen to that and make changes from that. Um, and I can't wait to do a GO2 myself, so. <laughs> okay, there's Oleg from Germany that is uh, claiming the fact that he can find the Educar app on the app store in Germany. Um, well, this isn't really the, the place for that, but I will try to find out why uh, Educar isn't listing it. Okay, and, we know. Uh, we right know, right our, on our website, we have an email for that. Yes, we know Olga very well. Uh, is, is our tech specialist in Germany. <laughs> Thanks for being with us, Olga. And we'll be back in contact uh, with you soon. Uh, when can we expect the new most adapter? Uh, that's a good question. It, it requires a lot of developing and we're struggling a little bit with the coding, but it could be something to have it beginning of the next year. Thanks for asking. Hey, uh, Holger, are you using iOS or, or uh, Android? Okay, let's see. Greetings from Argentina. Hello. Greetings from Italy and Portland, Oregon. Thanks for being with us. All right, stay in touch. We'll see you next two weeks. Uh -huh. And uh, okay, so uh, let's go back to the next slide to share. So we can be um, ending up uh, uh, this, uh, this session. And um, for those who would like to send over question, uh, Ken will be sharing now the, um, the, the, the email address you can rely uh, to ask us uh, further questions. Uh, you can write this and please mention that you have been uh, 
looking this episode and uh, will be addressing to us and we'll be more than happy to follow up. Now, before leaving, I would like to share with you what is gonna be talking in the next episode. Um, it's gonna be called Forza, uh, not right this. Uh, it's gonna be, yes, yes, Forza Power and Flexibility. So yes, there will, there will be a lot around Forza, Forza Amplifier with DSP, OEM integration at full power. APF Amplifiers and APK165P, the perfect match. Okay, and um, Prima Subs, compact, powerful, and compromise subwoofer line. So thanks to all for being with us. See you in two weeks' times. Bye-bye. Ciao, everybody.